Hello and welcome to my channel In Search of Wonder. My name is Anne and today I am doing the behind the booktube tag. This tag was initially created by Shelly at Shelly Swearingen. I've seen many of my favorite booktubers do this tag, so I'm not being tagged by anyone in particular, but I just wanted to share with you my answers to these questions as one of the ways to celebrate my first year anniversary being on booktube and hopefully give you a little bit of insight into my thoughts on my booktube channel and so let's just get started with the questions question number one what has surprised you the most about booktube in a good way or a bad way i don't think i've had any bad surprises about booktube actually i think the thing that surprised me the most but it shouldn't have because it was the main reason that I started my booktube channel is the wonderful community that is here on booktube. It's one of the best online communities that I have experienced. And even though that's what I was wanting when I started my channel, I guess I didn't really expect it to be so vibrant and so kind and welcoming. And I love the buddy reads that I have done, the group reads. I have enjoyed all of the readathons and reading challenges and other special reading events. I have enjoyed interacting in the comments, both in comments on my channel and in comments on other booktube channels interacting with people and developing friendships and relationships with people here on booktube. And I guess I didn't expect it to be this fulfilling, maybe is the right word, you know, because a lot of times in-person relationships are so much more meaningful than online ones because you don't necessarily get to know the people really online. But I feel like I have made some really wonderful friendships and relationships here on booktube and it's been much more fulfilling than I expected. So I apologize. I hopefully my phone will filter out some of the noise, but my neighbors right over there <laughs> are doing some building or something, doing some project out there and they're banging and kinds of stuff. So apologies if you hear that. Question number two, how do you balance reading and booktube with the rest of your life? <laughs> That's an ongoing question honestly and i think anybody who has a booktube channel can understand this yeah it's 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 a little bit difficult not only the reading and i think that having a booktube channel kind of makes you read a little bit more than you might otherwise just by the nature of it but also the filming and the editing etc i have to find a time to film when you know, my family is not needing this main living space because it's the, the basic area where I can film and or when the dishwasher is not running because it's right over there and it makes a lot of noise. So a lot of times during the school year, I end up filming in my car because that actually is the most convenient place for me. So, yeah, it is it is time consuming. I during the school year, I managed to fit it in by filming in my car, like I said in the downtime that I have in between needing to be here and needing to be there. And I do a lot of the editing at night when the kids are in bed, everything is wound down for the day, etc. It's kind of like my nighttime activity. And somehow I still have managed to continue to read as well. So I think what booktube has displaced maybe is some of the other entertainment that I would have chosen otherwise, like maybe scrolling on my phone, or watching movies or TV or something like that. Um, it may have displaced some other things that it shouldn't have, possibly. Responsibilities, uh, like a peep of my house or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. But yeah, it has been difficult finding a balance. And it also has been difficult finding like the sweet spot of how many times I post in a week and what I post in a week. I think I have filmed a lot and posted a lot in a week and been able to manage it. But at the same time, I think it's better to have just one video in the middle of the week and then my weekly wrap up on the weekends. So that was kind of a rambly, quite rambly answer to the question, but I have a feeling most of these are going to be rambly answers. So apologies for that. But question number three is, have you ever thought about starting a Patreon? And not seriously. Um, the thought has crossed my mind, but I... I just feel like when I'm not asking anyone to 
to subscribe monetarily, then I am not beholden to anybody. It's still something I can do on my own terms. And it's not like I'm letting anyone down really if I don't provide the content that was promised. So I, I like that. It gives me a little bit more freedom in my channel because I really, I really try to avoid adding responsibilities and things into my life that are more than I can reasonably handle. And I just think that that would be one that would be more than I could reasonably handle consistently. There may be times when I could provide extra content for Patreon, you know, on a regular basis, but then there would be times during the year when it would be almost impossible and it would become a stress to me. Currently, nothing about booktube is a stress to me. It's just a hobby that I enjoy. And I feel like adding that responsibility and accountability to other people in that sense would turn it into a stress and not into something that I would enjoy. So no, I don't think that I will ever do a Patreon for those reasons. Question number four, have you ever made any mistakes on booktube? <laughs> well, am I human? Yes, certainly I have made mistakes and I have learned along the way. I've learned by observing other booktube channels who do well. And I've learned by, um, I've watched a few uh, videos, you know, or tips about what to do on booktube or whatever, but I haven't really made it a goal necessarily to make this like the best booktube channel in the world. <laughs> it's like just a hobby for me, but as to mistakes, I've made all kinds of mistakes. I've made mistakes in the way I've interacted with people. I've made mistakes in, uh, in content. Like I I've said things that were, you know, not not true, not, not lying on purpose, but you know, I just, I made mistakes in what I was saying. Um, I spoke inaccurately and I have made mistakes on, um, how I did the filming and the editing. Like I forgot music or I forgot whatever, you know, uh, there was one in particular, one video I posted, I can't even remember what it was, but my sister texted me and I was like, did you realize that you totally repeated like the second half of the video? And I was like, Hmm, that's fantastic. And sure enough, yeah, like there was, and nobody else commented on it. My sister was the only one who mentioned it to me. So I'm sure other people noticed, but she was the only one who who said anything to me. So, um, you know, if you ever see anything like that, feel free, feel free to tell me because yeah, I definitely make mistakes. The bad thing was by the time she told me that I had deleted all of the raw material on my computer. And so I didn't, I didn't know how to fix it. So that video is still, I don't even remember which one it is, but it's still floating around there on my channel. The whole last quarter or third of it is a repeat of what came just before it. So <laughs> yes, I have definitely made mistakes. Number five is, do you have any advice for new booktubers? And I do, although I still feel like a newbie myself. So I feel like I still need advice from people, but I will give some advice as a booktube watcher, first of all, uh, and then as a booktuber, uh, just some quick advice. So uh, really only one thing in that regard. But as, as a booktube consumer, as someone who watches booktube, the main thing I would say is to make sure, like your video doesn't have to be top quality. I just use my phone. I don't have any special equipment. I use my phone. Um, my husband found a phone tripod that I have started using recently. And that's what I use. I also have a ring light, but then I discovered that my phone has a uh, little highlight feature for selfie videos. And I just use that now. I don't even bother to pull out the ring light. So I don't think you need a lot of special equipment. You just need a good phone uh, or a good, <clears throat> a good camera on your laptop or something like that. But do make sure that your videos have decent lighting. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I, I'm not a photographer, I'm not a videographer. So, and like I said, I had a ring light, I don't use it now. Um, but it just needs to be like clear and visible. The person talking needs to be clear and visible. And if it's in a dark room, sometimes I have filmed in my bedroom, which I don't like to do. It's a last resort for me because it is dark and it gives like a kind of a dark feel. I prefer not to film at night, but sometimes I have to, but usually if I have like the, the highlight light on my, my camera or my ring light, it helps, um, so that it's not like like dark and fuzzy like as long as the video is not dark and fuzzy it's good but if your videos are dark and fuzzy definitely figure out a way that you can film where there's more light and you can see the person's face clearly that's ideal and then the other thing is the audio quality which may even be more important than the video quality because 
I personally, and I think many people are like this, I listen and I like to listen at faster than normal speed. Usually one and a half, sometimes two, depending on the person. And it is much easier to do that if the audio is very clear. And it's much easier to listen to a booktube channel uh, if the audio is clear. So it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be top of the line equipment. I just use my phone. I don't even use a microphone. And I think that my videos, the audio seems to be fine to me. Let me know if you ever have had any trouble hearing me. Uh, but I have watched channels where the audio is very, very like muted or difficult to hear, or it fluctuates a lot. So I think audio is something to consider. And if your phone or whatever you're using to record doesn't automatically take good audio, you may need to get a microphone to work with it. So video and audio quality, although don't feel like you have to spend extra money, just be aware of it and do your best to have whatever your situation is, the best audio and video that you can get. And um, secondly, I really, really appreciate it. And I know it takes a little extra time, but I really appreciate it when booktubers list the books that they're talking about in the comment box, uh, in the description box, rather. When I am listening, I cannot always see what they are showing. And also because I am listening usually at a faster speed, I can't always quite hear exactly what the title is that they're referencing. And also, if I'm driving, I am listening and I can't comment, obviously. So I save the commenting for later when I have a minute or I comment at the end of the video if I can, but then I don't remember what, what the titles were of the books they were talking about. And I don't remember what I wanted to say as I was listening. So when they have the titles listed in the description box, it makes it so much easier for me to like, it jogs my memory. Oh yeah, she was talking about that book and I wanted to say this in response to whatever he or she was saying. And it makes it so much easier for me to interact with them. Also, it helps me to remember the books that people are talking about. So I know like if, if it's if it sounded interesting me, to me, then I can look it up for myself or I can keep it on my radar as far as going to read it myself. So I know it takes a little bit of extra time, but it's totally worth it for your viewers if you put the names of the books in your description box. If you don't have anything else in there, do put that. So uh, those are the main things as a viewer that I would say are really super helpful. And I love it when channels, those are my favorite channels, the channels who do that on a regular basis. Although there are plenty of channels that I love that don't necessarily include a lot of information in their description box and I still love them, but I do think it's really helpful to have that. My other advice for booktubers as a booktuber myself is to not underestimate the value of commenting and interacting with other channels on any level. So any time that you can comment on another channel, take a minute to do that. Any time that you can participate in a buddy read or hosting a readathon or any of those kinds of things, take up those opportunities because at least for me, the community is the biggest strength of booktube and there's no community if you don't do those things. If you are just a talking head coming out of the little box on the screen and you never interact with the other people on other channels, then you are very isolated and you isolate yourself from the community. And I think you're missing out and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, different, different people have different reasons for being on booktube. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I think that you will really miss out on the biggest blessings of booktube, which is the relationships that develop over our common love of reading. So if I had any advice as a booktuber myself, that would be the biggest one. Always take up the opportunities that you have to interact with other channels at whatever capacity you can and work on investing in those relationships because it's invaluable. And I think that the return is huge on that little bit of time investment. Number six is what are your thoughts on the YouTube algorithm? I don't really have any because you know, even back, how long ago was that? 15 years ago or so when I was a blogger, uh, SEO was always just a little bit mystical to me and I did my best to master it and you know I have some understanding of it but 
I don't really concern myself too much with it. I just put out the videos that I want to put out and sometimes they reach a lot of people and most of the time they don't and that's fine. 7A, how do you decide what videos to make? Uh, it kind of depends on what is going on in my life, in the booktube community and like seasonally, you know, what's going on. So what I post is sometimes affected by the things that I'm doing in my life and the things that interest me, um, like travel or particular books that I'm reading or particular topics that are in, of interest to me at the time. It's affected by the seasons and what I am either reading seasonally or doing seasonally. And it's affected by what's going on in the booktube community as far as what readathons are happening and that I might want to highlight, uh, you know, like Jane Austen July or Victober or something like that. So there are some influences that help me to decide what I want to post, but generally I post what I'm most excited about posting and the things that interest me the most. 7B is, are you ever overwhelmed with video ideas? And yes, <laughs> sometimes I am actually. In the year that I have been doing booktube, I think there have been two stretches of time, um, like, like a period of two or three weeks maybe, where I wasn't exactly sure what to post. But most of the time, my struggle is fitting what I want to post in the calendar in a way that makes sense. And like when to put in the tag videos that I want to do. Uh, like I have a couple of deep thoughts videos that I really want to do that have been on my mind for a long time. They just haven't fit on the calendar because other things supersede them. So yeah, I am often overwhelmed with video ideas for myself. And so as long as that happens, I'm just gonna be here because it's a creative outlet for me, um, having those ideas and then being able to produce the content and put them out. It's just, it's a lot of fun for me. When it comes to teaching, it's the same thing. Uh, my favorite thing is the lesson planning and having the ideas and coming up with the lesson plans and coming up with the activity ideas and stuff. Uh, the execution of it is fun too, but I really enjoy the mental process that goes into it. And the booktube is kind of the same way. I really enjoy coming up with the ideas for posting. And I, I like executing them in the sense of like, you know, when I have a video idea, I plan out all of the books that I want to show, or I figure out all the books that fit with certain prompts or whatever. That part is really, really fun for me. And the filming part I enjoy as well, but the editing part is the part that I don't like as much. That's the only thing I don't like. So, uh, but yes, I do get overwhelmed with video ideas and yeah. Eight, have you ever regretted posting a video? I don't think so. There are some videos that have done better than other videos and some videos that I thought were really fun for me to make and I thought were very interesting but didn't appeal to the people that watch my channel and which is perfectly fine I think that's actually kind of normal but I don't regret posting them and I, I haven't done anything like ranty or where I said anything that I regretted later I don't think not, not that I can recall 9a are the numbers of viewers or subscribers meaningful to you to a certain extent yes but not really. Um, I've, as I've said before in this video, this is largely a hobby for me, a, a creative outlet and a way to develop community and relationships over books, something that I really love. And it's not as much about making a name for myself. Actually, it's not at all about making a name for myself or, you know, being big and bad on booktube. That's not a goal. It never was a goal. I just really want to develop relationships with people that love books as much as I do. So in that sense, no, the, the number of viewers or subscribers is not meaningful at all to me. Now, I feel like if that number is consistently going down rather than up, then probably it's an indication that the content that I am offering is not of interest to a large number of people. Um, but at the same time, that doesn't necessarily mean I need to change anything as long as it's content that is drawing people to me on the same topic of interest that I have and I'm able to find my people so to speak and talk to them it doesn't matter if I'm not reaching the wider world at large currently I'm satisfied with where I'm at and I appreciate that the numbers continue to steadily rise at a pace uh, it's kind of arrived at a pace that it just keeps going at I'm happy with that and other than that I don't 
I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about it. 9B, are the number of viewers or subscribers a measure of success? I mean, in a sense, yeah, it's because it's, it's measurable. So you can measure how many viewers or subscribers you have. I think viewers and how much they view is a larger measure of success than the number of subscribers. I think how many views a video gets is only meaningful to a certain extent. I think it's how many viewers actually watch the video and interact with it and comment it. For me, that's the biggest measure of success. When people are commenting on the things that I am saying in my video, that is the largest measure of success to me. That means that I am meeting my goal of reaching people and interacting with them and having a conversation with them. So I think for me, the most meaningful aspect is the comments. Number 10 is related to that. Are you disappointed with the growth on your channel? Uh, not necessarily. I think I have seen more than one booktuber say that their goal is like a thousand a year while they're on booktube and i obviously didn't meet that i kind of had a goal for myself of of getting to a thousand by the end of this calendar year which would actually be almost a year and a half after i started my channel and i think that's still doable possibly but it's not like i said it's not really a measure of my success i have i have met many people who are interested in the same things that interest me reading wise and people who are interacting with me about reading on a regular basis. And in my opinion, that's mission accomplished. So the numbers are not so meaningful in that regard. So I, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it and I don't really worry too much about how to get those numbers up or whatever. Like I, I don't go looking for ways to increase my, my YouTube reach. I just, as long as I'm communicating with people who want to be here, I'm happy. Number 11, have you ever thought about quitting booktube? Not yet. Like I said, I still have, you know, so many ideas every month. Um, I just have new ideas about videos that I want to make or things that I want to do or things that I want to say. And I have ideas that I still haven't made videos of. So I'm still here. As long as the ideas keep coming, I'll still be here. 12A, what are the most touching comments? Um, I really love the comments. Uh, two kinds of comments that I really love. One, when people respond to something that I am talking about in a, in a book or in my life or whatever. And they respond with something from their own life, something personal. And I really appreciate that because that's another thread in the, the, the weave of the connection, right? Of the inner, of the relationship. And I also love the comments where people say, Oh, you mentioned such and such a book and I read it and I enjoyed it. And I love that because I love making a recommendation for a book and someone actually reading it and enjoying it. That means that is very meaningful. It means a lot to me. I also love the comments when people say, um, I really enjoy watching your videos, uh, for what, whatever particular reason that they have, um, something that is meaningful to them about the videos that I make. And that of course is a very valuable comment as well that I really enjoy hearing. 12B, what are the most negative comments? I've had very few negative comments on my channel. In fact, I don't know, it, negative is a strong word. I have had a few people make corrections of things that I have said on my channel and some of their corrections have been wrong and some of them have been right. But I wouldn't say that's necessarily negative because you know sometimes people say things that are incorrect or inaccurate and it should be corrected, right? If it's inaccurate. So I wouldn't necessarily say that it was negative. I feel like negative would be like, you're ugly and your channel's dumb. And I've never gotten any comments like that. So <laughs> number 13, in regards to booktube, where do you see your channel in five years? And hopefully in a very similar place, because like I said, I'm very happy with where I am. I'm happy with the friends that I have made. Um, of course, would love to, to make more friends and meet more new people and have many more bookish discussions and doing a lot more um, fun things together with other readers. Uh, so I guess I would say more of the same. So where I'm at, but more of it. You know, that would be where I see myself in five years on booktube. So I hope you enjoyed this peek into my booktube journey that I have had thus far. I wanted to close, um, this tag didn't actually come with instructions to tag anybody, but that's the generally accepted way to do a tagged video, right? So I just want to mention a few channels that, like I said, commented on my channel and that is how I met them. That is how I began to watch their channels, interact with them. And that's how those relationships have developed. And there are others that come to mind 
But the top three that I want to mention, because otherwise this would go on too long, the top three that I want to mention are Dia at Novel Idea and Morgan at Morgan's Endless Bookshop. And I'm sorry, sir, I don't believe that I know your first name, but Reading Ideas from England. Those three channels were commenting on my channel and that's how I met them and began to interact with them. And I really love all of their channels and their thoughts and how faithful they are at communicating and interacting with me and with other uh, channels. I see them very often commenting on, on all of y'all's channels as well. And so I just really appreciate their, their strong uh, sense of community and community building that they share and that they've been a great example to me. And also I've just been really enjoying getting to know all three of them. So if you three have never done this tag before, feel free to do it. Otherwise, feel free to ignore this tag 100%. I will not be even remotely offended. I just wanted to mention that I love you guys and your contributions to uh, my channel here on booktube. So I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on my uh, booktube journey, my thoughts about being here on booktube, and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>